Hi, I'm Mr. Rajiv Sharma. I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon and uh, I subspecialize in upper limb surgery that includes shoulders, elbows, wrist and hand. And I do a lot of sports injuries, joint replacement of the upper limbs, etc. The symptoms of a rotator cuff injury are of two types really. It could be a very acute symptom. So someone walking along with a dog has a fall gets a lot of pain in the shoulder, is unable to lift the arm, that's an acute injury. And what that presents as is the rotator cuff function is to start lifting the arm up by stabilizing the shoulder joint. And we find that I can't really lift it up easily. That's a, that is a high index of suspicion that you've got a rotator cuff tear and it can be quite painful. However, majority of the people will present with a chronic pain in the shoulder for several weeks, several months, having had physiotherapy, injections, etc., and not getting better. And then we investigate, then we find these, that they have had rotator cuff tears, which have, they've been putting along with trying to find funny movements and trying to get on with their lives. So it can be presented in both ways, either chronic, which is long-term, or sudden. On an average, a person who typically suffer is uh, a very active person who's been doing a lot of overhead work. One of the most common people you'll see are decorators, electricians, and you'll find them with a lot of overhead activity. People in the mid 40s to mid, mid 50s would find that, uh, that the rotator cuff tends to become a bit weak as you get older and tend to get more injured by that time. And uh, so they'll be the people who will be most commonly seen with rotator cuff problems. Sometimes you get young sportsmen who've had a, who are into high level sports and they'll They'll have had trauma on the football pitch or rugby, for instance, or even racket sports players. And with the sheer power of the game and the use of the arm and shoulder, that can lead to a tear in a very young person as well. My top tips for primary care is to, once you've assessed the patient, uh, you do know what they do, what are their current health issues. And the moment you feel that conservative management like physiotherapy and perhaps even an injection hasn't given the desired result, it would be worth considering that there is a rotator cuff pathology. And the initial investigation, I would always say, is get an x-ray done, make sure that the bones are okay, the joint uh, does not have any encroachment on the rotator cuff. It gives us an idea as to, well, there is something going on and it would be worth starting an investigation. And that's about it. And a lot of the rotator cuffs, if they become symptomatic, that is, you start getting pain and disability, unable to sleep, etc., because of the pain, then it's time to actually send it across to the hospital, to the surgeon, to make a decision as to how to treat best. The treatment options are several. I mean, I've been doing rotator cuff surgery for over 20 years, and I've seen it develop as one of the fastest changing treatment uh, situations in orthopedics. Uh, we we don't open up the shoulder at all with a cut at all. It's all done through the keyhole or so-called arthroscopy. And that has given us a lot of ways to treat it very effectively, very securely, returning the patients back to work within a matter of weeks, what it would have been in the past for months. And that's made a huge difference. Not only the techniques have gotten better, we've got lots of innovative stuff uh, going on in shoulder surgery, um, where bad rotator cuffs can be actually repaired and reconstructed through the keyhole and returning people back to the normal function in a matter of months. The recovery time for a standard rotator cuff surgery, which would be a keyhole operation, is, is fairly rapid. So I would say the patient would get some form of an anesthetic, usually a block which numbs the arm with a bit of general anesthetic to assist the patient to sleep so they don't know what's happening. It's usually done as a day kiss. They come in the morning, they go home later in the evening. If they want to stay overnight, that can be arranged as well, so they can have a change of dressing in the morning and meet the physiotherapist before they go. I would think so. If the rotator cuff is well repaired, and because it's a repair procedure, it's, uh, one would expect that repair to work so well that it becomes as good as normal initially. The rotator cuff is not just repaired on its own, it's always, there's always a shoulder that's decompressed, that you know, made good, so to speak, so all the worn out areas are trimmed and everything else is seen. And every rotator cuff tear and repair 
varies in recovery depending on the age, the kind of the tear, the expectation of the person, what they do work-wise. So it varies from person to person. Sometimes it can, and, uh, but once the rotator cuff is repaired, the person getting the rotator cuff repaired knows what to avoid, what not to do. Once it's healed well, it's unlikely that it would just tear just like that unless the rotator cuff is in a very poor situation. In that case, we know that it that, that shouldn't have been repaired. It probably should have been reconstructed. And sometimes rotator cuffs are not repairable and one has to look at other options. Rotator cuff surgery is evolving at such a rapid pace that almost every other year you find something new coming around. These are the innovations in surgery. Uh, in the UK, we are very careful. It, everything has to be approved by the NICE guidelines. And uh, once it's approved, then it can be used in normal practice. Some of these need to be put on a trial and I can still treat, treat, treat patients as long as we're doing it in a controlled circumstances. So a few of the things that have really come out in rotator cuff surgery is that how do we repair an advanced rotator cuff tear that is irreparable? Depending on an age, we have things like balloon arthroplasty, which is quite new. It's rapidly done, improves the function of the patient quite rapidly. You can repair the tendon or not, but it gives a very good functional outcome and prevents the person from having a joint replacement. Because a bad rotator cuff tear prevents the joint from functioning well and can lead to a, 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 coin, a term that's coined as cuff tear arthropathy, which means developing arthritis because the rotator cuff is so badly torn. And Predominantly, these patients would only get joint replacements in the past, but you don't need that anymore, always. So you can do an interim procedure, which is just a keyhole procedure, in and out in about 15-20 minutes, and, and they do really well with it. So these are the new innovations that are coming out. Even the repair techniques and reconstruction techniques with a lot of patch materials, etc., have come out. That's something was never dreamt of in the past, that you could reconstruct a rotator cuff back to its normal position with using these materials. So these are all, all come in. So I always tell the patient that you must have an expectation to get back to normal and leave the challenge to us because we have techniques and uh, strategies available to achieve that. The patients can be referred to me directly by the general practice. They can approach me directly via the hospital switchboard uh, once they know that the rotator cuff surgery or they suspect that's happened or the GP has told them that you've got a rotator cuff pathology rather than wasting time getting ultrasound exams and MRIs etc done because they do need a proper assessment clinical examination. Sometimes they can get away without anything because it was something entirely different once I've seen them and sometimes I'll get them through and sort them out with either surgery or physiotherapy what I feel is appropriate for them but they do get the treatment that they need immediately. Mm -hmm.